Hello YouTube. Yesterday in the video I released, I briefly mentioned the topic of bullying. And I asked you guys if you would be interested in hearing more about said topic, because I have a take that's a little bit different than most people on the subject matter. And a lot of you guys actually were in favor of it. Some of you actually deal with bullying on a daily basis, or you have loved ones who are suffering from it. And since I understand I have a lot of people who are still children in a sense, that's all in high school, in middle school, and that might be exposed to that phenomenon, it might be a good idea for me to come out and explain to you what it actually entails, the mechanisms behind bullying, how to defend yourself from it, and to reshape the way you view it, because, as you see from the title, I personally believe that bullying is good. And I want to explain to you why, because I was extensively bullied as a kid, and what saved my ass was this ability to reframe my state of mind and to stop considering bullying as something that was happening to me, as something that was, in a sense, trying to destroy me. It was trying to destroy me, but it never actually managed. And the reason why is because I redirected the energy that was thrown my way. So let's get into the topic at hand. If you're not a kid and you're not being bullied by your peers, you might still want to stick around because one, you might be tantalized by this very edgy title. And also because bullies are not just kids. There are bullies in all areas of life. Everyone can be around bullies. You can be a bully when you're 60 years old. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. There are always going to be people in your life that you're going to have to actually interact with that are going to have traits that relate them to bullies in the sense that they're going to try to hurt you. They're trying to st take stuff from you. They're going to try and make you feel bad. All of these can be found in children. They can be found in adults. And that's for a very simple reason. Life is a constant battle. Bullies are adversaries. That's all they truly are. And I sort of touched upon that in the video I made about identity, where I explained to you that the reason why you want a strong identity is to protect yourself because the second you interact with others, you are at risk. The second you interact with other humans, the war has started. I understand that it's not a very cushy way of envisioning life, but it's the way it is. It's the way existence functions. If you want to be blind to it, or the better to you, but you're going to be catched at a dead angle by an arrow that you haven't seen coming because you prefer to remain innocent. And that is the number one thing that you are going to have to stop being. Stop being so innocent. I hope that this video is going to help you shed away all of that nonsense and naivety because it is the number one reason why you're being bullied, why you're being targeted, is because you don't see it coming. And when it hits you, you're incapable of perceiving it for what it is. All of these things that are thrown your way, all of the insults, all of the physical hits, at the end of the day, the only thing they accomplish is they break down your identity. They reduce you to something lesser than human. They steal your agency. They steal your ability to feel good about yourself. This is what bullying does to a human. It reduces your self-worth. And that's, that's really what people aim to do when they bully you. They don't really just want to hurt you physically or to just call you a, a, a dickhead for the sake of it. There is always a plan. Even if they don't understand it themselves, you do, because you are the one who is the recipient of these actions. And you perfectly understand that bullying is more than the surface level action that these people engage in. It's the way it makes you feel. So at the end of the day, bullying, in a sense, is an emotion. You are being bullied. If you look at the semantics, it is a state that you've entered. You are now the bullied. And there is someone out there that is the bully. That is life. There's the top dog and there's the bitch. And if you're being bullied, you are the bitch. Someone else has established dominion over you. And that is the reason why you are so miserable. Because you are not in full control of your life. Because someone else either took control of your identity, reshaped it, or destroyed it altogether. And that damages who you are. You can truly break down someone and just destroy their future via bullying. I know many people who actually ended years and years of bullying and who were completely destroyed from it and never recovered. There are also people who actually, I also know people who actually survived it and they became better. And the reason why they managed to do that is because they resisted. And most of the time they resisted because they understood 
that the importance in this entire thing was to understand why the bullying occurs in the first place. Now, uh, as I said, I'm going to approach all of this from a standpoint of morality that is not widely embraced in this day and age because I firmly believe that bullying is an integral part to the world and that it's only natural that humans would bully other humans. And it's true that nowadays we don't see it as such. We see it as unacceptable. You hear people say that bullying should never occur and we want no bullying whatsoever. That is nothing but a pipe dream. It's impossible to achieve to start with. And on top of that, the type of mindset, as I said, is highly naive. It ignores the very nature of bullying. It ignores the fact that it comes from the natural drive that humans have to dominate other humans. And that drive starts from a very young age. It is partly cultural, partly biological. You don't need to teach a kid that. A kid will quickly figure it out. If you can bully another kid when you're four years old, chances are you can steal his dessert and you'll have twice as much dessert. That falls good, therefore you will do it again to other kids. This is as simple as that. Bullying can start from the dumbest places and usually it is because bullying is fairly dumb in reality. It's a, a very sad and primal instinct and drive and impulse in humans but just because it is dumb and something that we don't want to actually see in this world doesn't mean it's going to go away. Just because you call something bad or mean doesn't mean it goes away. If anything, it just allows you to ignore it long enough for you to feel better about the idea that you potentially eradicated it when in reality it is still around. And the thing with this modern view and this modern morality that surrounds bullying is that it has a tendency to favor the weak and to put the weak in a position where it is apparently protected. And that is an issue. You, you see that across the board where we have slowly modified the figure of the hero. And nowadays, the people who are seen as morally superior, who are seen as worth emulating, are weaklings. It's not the guy with a sword that cut a thousand heads and saved this country that's the hero. It's the guy who got victimized and he somehow survived. And now for some reason you're told that this is the figure that you're supposed to want to resemble. That doesn't work and most people will never feel attracted towards that type of life. But it doesn't stop the fact that it is still the case. The issue with that type of morality is that it doesn't breed strength. When you have a view of bullying, for example, you think, oh, it's unacceptable to bully the weak. What do you do in reality? You are trying to place the weak in a position where it is apparently superior moral to be the weak, to be the bullied, and that's it, right? It, it stops there. So it, it's a mindset that has convinced itself that just by assigning morality to the action of weakness, you're going to somehow make it less palatable for the strong to bully the weak. But that's never worked. Look at the world around you. Look at this morality of weakness that is being pushed. Has it reduced the amount of wars? Has it reduced the amount of suffering? Not at all. If anything nowadays, it misprepares people for the reality of the world. When you tell a kid or an adult for that matter that it's unacceptable they're being bullied and you leave it at that or you tell them, well, whoever bullies you is a bad person. Okay, great. Something belle jambe, as we say in French, but what does it accomplish? The answer is it accomplishes fucking nothing because it's a completely unpractical morality. My morality is quite practical and this morality is based on the idea that bullying is good and that if you are being bullied, you are the defective part. The issue is not the bully, it's you. By reshaping the problem and placing you at the center of it, I'm going to allow you to actually make it out alive. Because if I keep you as a poor, helpless lamb that can, can protect themselves and you have to just wish that someone stronger than you is going to actually come save your ass or that the bully is going to somehow stop for some reason, then it's magically going to save your life. It's not going to happen. Why would the strong stop bullying the weak? Ask yourself that question. You are being bullied. It's for a reason. It's because you are bu bullyable. You have been assigned with a certain target on your back and that target says that whatever someone does to you, whatever meanness and, and crass behavior aimed at destroying your identity is actually directed towards you, you will do nothing. You will maybe cry to an authority figure, but that's pretty much it. This is the reason why 
you are the prey and the bully as the predator because he has the ability to hurt you, but you don't have the ability to defend yourself. Keep that in mind because it's the basis of my argument. So, as I stated just now with a very naturalistic approach to the question in reality, bullying is the birthright of the strong. It's something that across the board throughout the history of humanity has always been true. The strong does whatever he wants to the weak. Why? The weak has no way to stop him from doing it. It starts and ends there. It's as simple as that. Might makes right. You can say it's unjust, you can say it's unfair, but that's the reality of the world. And all of the whining and all of the deconstruction of society and masculinity and whatever the fuck you want won't change it. Violence is a very viable option and a very viable method to get what you want. If you can scare people into submitting to you because you're stronger than them and you're willing to hurt them, you are going to get a lot of work done. And that's something that kids, for example, figure out very early on, as I stated. I remember being young, the kids that had the best time in elementary school, for example, were the very popular kids who were either attractive or very smart or athletic. So they attracted a crowd around them of people who wanted to be their friend or the violent psychopath who was willing to smash your head into the wall to steal your candy. These two are the kings. The weaklings that couldn't defend themselves and were not socially attractive had absolutely nothing to show for. So their status as weak was of no help to their condition. It is never a good idea to be weak. Your weakness is the very reason why you're being bullied. The strong has full reign over you. And that is a sad state of affair, but it's your life if you're in that case. Now, as I said, only weaklings and victims get bullied. And I don't say that as like an alpha chat that was always floating above the rest and always dominant. I was bullied my entire scholarly pretty much. It stopped when I was 14. But the reason why I was bullied is because I was weak and I wouldn't stand up for myself. So I was a perfect target. Looking back on myself, when I picture back all of the things I went through, I have no resentment towards my bullies because what they did was only natural. It wasn't very nice, but it was only natural. They wanted something from me or just to humiliate me. And they did. They took what they wanted because if you cannot protect something, then it doesn't really belong to you. That also goes for your body and for your identity. There is no such thing as a govern governmental corporation or any type of law or stipulation that is going to have the ability to protect you at all points of your life. The only thing standing between you and your own destruction is yourself. So you have to take responsibility. You're weak, it's your fault. Change yourself. But we're going to get to how uh, at some point in this video. So to relate that back to childhood, because I know a lot of people who get bullied are kids that are still in high school, for example, you have to understand that the reason why bullying is so prevalent in children is for the reason I just described. It is a very black and white way of seeing the, the problem and the situation, but it's actually the easiest way to understand why bullying at the end of the day is good. And calling it bad is, a, is again, a misconstruction and a terrible idea because it brings no solution. There is in children a much purer and primal understanding of life because they're not shackled by all of the rules and regulations that adults have to abide by. Rules, by the way, that are extremely necessary, of course. I'm not telling you that we should do away with laws. I am far from being an anarchist. If anything, I'm more of an enlightened... I don't know what, what, what I would even call myself, but I do understand the importance of rules, right? Uh, my love for freedom doesn't prevent me from understanding that we need to regulate society and that the social pact is vital. Thing is, kids don't give a fuck about that. Kids are not civilized yet. Even if their parents did a good job, there is still a wild beast within them, which is why their bullying is so in your face and it's so all over the place as well. It's not as vicious as adult bullying because it's not as sophisticated, but it's much more evident. So it's very easy to observe. And for children, the issue that is going to quickly arise is that this, ab this absence of veil of civilization means that kids have no limits. Kids have close to no empathy. For some of them, some are actually birthed with it to an extent. But you'll see that it is a trait that is mostly lacking in children and also tend to have weak identities. And that is a problem because both the bully and the bullied tend to have weak identities, which means that the bully doesn't possess the strength of character to refrain themselves from using strength on the weak. And the weaklings has no identity to speak of, so they have no protection and war 
to stop the bullying from occurring. So it's the perfect scenario to have very pure bullies and very pure bu uh, bullied. There is no real uh, interference here, meaning that if adults are taken out of the equation, it's mayhem. And it's the reason why you have so many stories that relate the, the history and the, 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 the tale of children who are left to their own device. It quickly devolves. Why? Civilization was invented by adults. Kids are just incapable of constructing uh, civilized uh, institutions or civilized societies because they lack the traits that they would then learn as they grow up. But keep in mind that even if they grow up, it doesn't mean that they're going to stop bullying people. This desire to bully is still present throughout the life of pretty much any and every living creature. And to relate that back to the question of identity, it's something that I want to insist on because many people would tell me that it then means that bullies must be people with very strong identities and it's the reason why they have the ability to not dominate people who have weak identities. It's not the case. The question of identity doesn't play a role in the ability to bully others. You don't need an identity to make someone feel bad. The only thing you need is to break their, their own. You just need to have the ability to break what they have. Just like, for example, burning down someone else's house doesn't necessitate you having a house. If anything, you would be much more likely to try to burn their house down if you're, you yourself were homeless. In a sense, it's the reason why kids also are so direct and violent to their bullying is that if they have emotions in them that they feel like taking out on someone else, they'll do it. Adults are going to try to refrain or they're going to try to... to to put makeup on it so that so as not to actually be revealed, so as not to be presented as someone who has no control over their emotion. Kids that don't care about that. They'll fall a certain way and they'll do it. They have no impulse control. So it's why, again, it's so interesting to look at it in the realm and the environment of children. But something to keep in mind is that even though bullies don't have strong identities themselves, they have a tendency to create them. And that is when we get into the answer as to why bullying is good. Because it is very easy and tempting also in the realm of philosophy and psychology to come up with very edgy and contrarian beliefs or concepts just to stir the pot and just to create a reaction. And it's not what I want to do here. I'm not trying to be edgy. I truly do believe that bullying is good. And the reason why is because I am the fruit and the result of intense bullying myself. I was bullied to the point where I had two choices, either die or change. And I chose to change and it made me the man I am today. And as shocking as it might sound for some people who actually suffered from their bullying, I suffered as well, but that pain transformed me. And I actually am very thankful for my bullies. Because I think that if they weren't there, if I didn't go through the filter that they represented, I wouldn't be the man I am today. And I would most likely not be as happy as I am or as strong as I am. And I'm going to explain to you exactly why. So as to make you understand why I was different than someone else who actually made the mistake of taking the bullying they received as a punishment and they therefore lowered themselves and never managed to actually evolve or transform from it. So, the reason why, and I'm going to propose a theory for you, and you'll tell me if you accept it or not, the reason why bullying creates strong identities is because I believe bullies to be agents of nature. I don't see bullies as humans, right? I I'm not telling you that I dehumanize them, but what I say is that the impulse and the need and the, the, the very strength and willpower after the bullying that creates the bullying is not intellectualized. Most people who bully you are not secretly aiming to slowly destroy and chip away at your identity or to manipulate you after months and months to get something from you. Most of the time, it's just something they do naturally because they feel like it. And they feel like it because they can't do it. It's as simple as that. And it truly is as simple as that for other aspects of life. Meaning, for example, that the reason why most people don't steal is because we have laws against stealing. If it was access, uh, acceptable to take your private property at no repercussion, most people would steal. Because you take something for free. It's free resources. Why wouldn't you do it? In the same vein, if you can hurt someone and it makes you feel better about yourself, or you can take something away from them as you bully them, why wouldn't you do it? Well, the answer is you would. 
That is the truth of the matter, and is the reason why there are agents of nature. It is essentially the reality of this wood knocking on the door and telling to you, hey, you're weak right now, this person is strong, there's no one standing between you and them, so they're going to do whatever they want with you. And if you're not happy with that, you have to change, because I will not change. I, being nature, will go back on the question of nature, but it's the reason why it's stupid to try to change nature. Nature will never actually change. Now, this means that bullies essentially prepare you for the real wood. They are a, a microscopic representation of what you will have to go through as you enter the adult wood, because bullies never stop existing. It's not like they disappear. The kid that bullied you in third grade is going to grow up into an adult that, have, that might have developed an appetence for bullying. He's not going to magically go away or turn into a good person. Yes, most bullies get civilized, but the underlying desire to dominate people never goes away. And anyone who's worked in any competitive environment will tell you that the corporate environment can be as mean, as dangerous as the toughest high school. Because the level of shit you'll have to deal with as an adult has much stronger repercussions than just being bullied so that someone can steal your candies. You better believe that. So whatever shit you went through in school is almost nothing. But I understand that because back in the days you were not prepared and because you had a weak identity, it most likely traumatized you because it was the worst thing that ever happened to you. And that is, that is sort of the sad truth of, ch of childhood bullies is that if it occurred to you now, like if your childhood bully at, at his age could show up to you now and say the same thing or do the same things to you they used to do to you, it wouldn't even touch you because now you accumulated enough experience to be prepared for that type of treatment. But back then, it wasn't the case. And so it made it extremely difficult for you to build something because there were people around you in your vicinity that were constantly working on destroying what you were trying to build, which is this identity. But if you had taken that as a, a chance to actually rebuild stronger every single time, you would have been better prepared. I understand that not everyone was actually ready to do that. And it's the reason why bullying, as I said in the identity video, is a coin toss. It can either forge or break you. It either tempers the soul to an extent that it's now unbreakable, or it shatters it in half and now it's completely unusable. I want to make sure that I can actually help you understand how to make it so that your soul gets strengthened and not destroyed. And that is going to go through an understanding of how bullying functions. Most bullying I have found is mental. It's mental attacks. I know that we have this romantic view of bullying nowadays because of Hollywood, where it's always the jug that pushes you and then he punches you in the stomach. That's 5% that's of bullying. Most bullying is insults. It's ways to demean you, to make you feel bad about yourself, humiliations in public. All of that is the core of bullying. And I would even go as far as to say that if you only got physically bullied, like for me, for example, it was only physical bullying, you're lucky because physical bullying is easy to deal with. The repercussions of the physical attacks is a different story altogether. And the truth of the matter is that most of the time you will find out that all of these attacks, all of these, these attacks that are verbal, aim to do one thing and one thing only. They aim to break you down. And if you can understand that, they lose their power to an extent because you're going to stop looking at it as something personal or something aimed at you for the strict purpose of hurting you. Try to understand what is actually occurring. As I told you, I don't even believe for a second that bullies understand what I'm saying right now. They're agents of nature. They're not particularly smart. They're, they don't have a master plan to break you down. It's the reason why also it's so easy to circumvent. They don't know what they're doing. They just do what they've been designed to do, which is dominate. And this domination is, in a sense, causing you to become subservient. And that is what you have to refute. You have to refuse that state of affair. Because all of these humiliation and all of these, these mistreatments in reality are what are going to weight you down. That is what bullying really is. Bullying is not one occurrence. Anyone who's been bullying one time hasn't been bullied. Bullied, being bullying, bullied is the constant reoccurrence of mistreatments that wait on you to the point where you stop having any self worth whatsoever, where you start being afraid of being around people. I remember myself waking up in the morning and thinking, hmm, do I even really want to go to school? Because I already knew what was going to happen. I knew that my day was going to be an endless 
and perpetual continuation and just succession of bullying sessions. And that's no fun. No human wants to have to go through that. But you'll have to go through that because, as you know, asking bullies to stop nicely does nothing. If anything, it makes it worse. And that is when the physical violence usually starts, by the way. Physical violence tends to be a manifestation of psychological attacks. It's a buildup. Usually the bullies start with small attacks and, and small humiliations, and then they escalate to slapping you or kicking you or whatever. And that shows something about bullies. It shows that they're not super confident in themselves because they have to test the waters first. They tried insults first to see if you're going to respond. And because you did not respond, then it escalated to physical attacks. This is also your fault. It's because you're weak. You couldn't actually pass the first test. And so you were marked in their heads as a potential prey. And so the mistreatment immediately escalated because bullies are essentially predators, just like any type of agents of nature. A wolf that is going to predate on a sheep does it out of instinct. He doesn't really understand why he does it. His methods might be very effective to track and kill the sheep, but at the end of the day, his final goal is something that even escapes him to a certain extent. He's just following the natural drive that he has inside him. And the only way that you would have to actually get out of that cycle of predation is to stop being a prey. Right? As I said, you cannot ask the predator to stop being a predator. That makes no sense. The sheep that asks the wolf to stop being a wolf is going to die. Actually, we have many fables and many parables in France about that very thing, about the sheep or the lamb that was too naive and too trusting with the wolf and thought that the wolf could change and that if they just asked nicely, they would be spared. Asking does absolutely nothing. Trust me, I tried. It is not something that functions. And this is why zero tolerance policies don't work. They're fucking bullshit. And it's even embarrassing that grown adults came up with them because it shows that many people forget the social dynamics that kids have with one another. They truly do believe that all of that nonsense is going to help people not be bullied. If anything, zero tolerance policies make bullying worse because they actually help the bullies. And it's something that has been said a million times before. But to quickly sum it up, the reason why is the only way to stand up to a bully is not kindness, is not understanding, it's not patting them on the head, it's not being their friend, it's not submitting, especially not submitting, it's fighting back. The only thing a bully understands is the same power and strength and energy he's directing towards you. It's the only way. And I know, you don't fight fire with fire. Well, actually, that's fucking bullshit. Anyone who actually worked as a fireman would tell you that when there is a fire, we go around and we burn the wood around the fire so as to make sure that it doesn't propagate. Same for people who say, oh, you can't fight violence with violence. Bullshit. When a country is misbehaving, what do you do? Do you ask them nicely, hey, stop bullying your neighbors? No, you send your army and you bomb them until they stop. Strength is always the best recourse to any problem you have in your life. Weakness never is. So that's for zero tolerance policies that are based on an intolerant view of the world that thinks that since bullying is so unacceptable, then any response to bullying that involves violence is unacceptable itself. That cannot stand because it denies reality, okay? Take it from someone who was bullied for years, did nothing about it, and the only thing it did is it made the bullying worse. And yes, I tried to talk to adults. What do adults do about it? Nothing. They don't care. And you know it. And even if they did care, what do they do? Go up to the kid and say, hey, stop bullying him or I'm going to do X or Y to you. Does that work? No. If that, if that worked, then the kid wouldn't bully you in the first place. He bullies you because the repercussions that he expects are not severe enough to stop him. Actually, the only time in my life where a bully stopped because a teacher intervened is because the teacher got physical. The teacher liked me so much, and she was pregnant also, so I think the hormones just made her a bit crazy, that she grabbed the kid by the collar and she put him in front of a wall and she started screaming at him. That's the only reason why he stopped, because he was more afraid of her than he was of anyone else in reality. So that was the repercussion. What stopped the violence from occurring was the violence that she threatened him with, and that's the truth. But the thing is, most adults are not going to be willing to do that. 
Most adults are not going to be willing to bat for you because at the end of the day, it's a dog eats dog wood. And if you're being bullied, the only person concerned about it is yourself. If you have parents willing to bat for you, then maybe they can save your ass. But understand that at some point, your parents won't be there for you. That only works if you're a kid. You're going to enter a world where people are going to try and bully you again and again. So you have to find a way out of it. And what is the way out of being bullied? Well, I'm going to tell you it's very simple. The way out of being bullied is to respond with adequate strength. And this is when I'm going to tell you the story of how I stopped my bullies. Because it's a very informative story and I hope it's motivational enough that it's going to give you the keys to understand how to protect your own identity when needed. So, a little backstory. I was bullied and beaten like a dog for years and years in elementary school, but it was never bad enough for me to actually do something about it or have to change because I wasn't threatened enough, which is also a vicious thing about bullying, where if it's tame enough, even if it makes your life miserable, you won't do anything about it because you think, well, I can still survive. Well, surviving is not good enough. You want to thrive and you want to dominate as well. And it's something that I actually eventually find out because the bullying escalated when I entered middle school because I was now the smallest and youngest in the entire, you know, courtyard or yard or whatever you want to call it with the other kids. And that is when the bullying again became really, really bad to the point where I was being beat up by people I didn't even know. Like I remember going to the bathroom and a kid looking at me and saying, I don't like your face and then just beating me up just for this. Why did he do it? Well, because he could, because he knew that there was not going to be any repercussion because the school I was in didn't really care about that, which is the truth for most schools. I could have went to an adult and say someone bullied me, but at the end of the day, it would stop one guy and another guy would start again. And that's what happened to me. At some point, I stopped reporting it because it was useless. I was a target for pretty much every single other kid because I was a weakling. So I got bullied and bullied and bullied, and it was hell on earth. I hated my life and I hated myself. That's what bullies do to you. If they only punched you or kicked you, it, it would be fine. But as I told you, most of what I received was physical punishment. And yet it started to slowly degrade my identity and self-worth. Because if people can make of me whatever they wish, then surely it means that I have no value whatsoever. It's what I started to believe. And in truth, it was the case. I was weak. Weaklings don't get to decide their destiny. They don't get to decide their bodily agency. They are just slaves. They are slaves to the desideratas or whoever has enough power to use them. So that was my life. And then one day, something happened that changed my view of the world. I was in the, uh, in the cafeteria and a friend of mine who was just as weak and, and wimpy as me was greeted by two dudes who were complete fucking psychopaths. These guys busted my nose for fun just because they felt like it, like busted it in the middle of the yard for no reason whatsoever. These same dudes that hated me because I was weak, liked that guy and even were afraid of him, even though he was the same as me. He was not able to fight to save his life. Those two kids that I just described were like from the Balkans, they were Slavic kids, pretty sure that growing up they were fighting dogs in a cave somewhere because they were complete monsters. And yet, again, they were given, giving respect to my friend. And I didn't understand it. So I told myself, okay, I'm going to look at the way this guy behaves because it might save my ass. And so I did. And like three or four days later, as I was shadowing the guy and trying to see how he behaved to get so much respect because no one fucked with him, we were in line at the cafeteria and another kid that was a very known bully who didn't know him tried to take an apple from his plate. And he took the apple. He was very fast. He took the apple and he took a bite and he threw it at my friend. And my friend said, if you, if you do it again, I'm going to stab you with a fork. And the kid, of course, being a bully, tried to push the boundary because he thought it was bullshit. So he reached to grab something in a hot plate. It was like lasagna or something. And he was slower this time because whatever he tried to reach was further away from the plate. And my friend, without hesitating a second, grabbed the fork and stabbed his hand with it, where the fork was sticking out. Right? It had penetrated inside deep enough that it was standing inside the hand of the guy. And I remember the guy lifting his hand, not feeling any pain because of the shock, looking at the fork, looking at my friend with like a shocked look and running out of the cafeteria screaming. And I looked at my friend and he had like a, just a passive look on his face, like business as usual. And that's when I realized it didn't matter that the guy was weak. What mattered is that he reacted. 
Every single time he got bullied, there was a repercussion. Something happened to the bully. Bullies attack you because they know that nothing is going to happen to them. They can exact their power on you and they are not going to suffer any repercussions from adults or from you. It's the same with predators. If a lion attacks a zebra and gets kicked, he's not going to attack again. Why? Because he doesn't want to get kicked. It's the reason why predators target weak or sick or old prey. Same for bullies. They target weaklings. So how do you change the way a bully looks at you and views you? How do you change your status as a prey? Well, you prove to them that you're not prey. So from that moment on, I told myself, okay, whenever someone bullies me, I'm going to attack them like a, like a maniac. I didn't know how to fight, but I just jumped on them and did whatever I could. And guess what? It worked. Because bullies don't want to get hurt. They don't like pain. So every single time someone tried to fuck with me, I just jumped them and I got beat up. I still got beat up. I lost every single fight. But guess what? Every time I lost a fight, the person that I lost the fight to left me alone because I left them with some damage. And that's it. It's as stupid as that. I fought fire with fire. By being strong enough to stand up for myself, I managed to actually live a peaceful life. I didn't want to fight. And I never had to fight after middle school again because... I protected myself and from that moment on, it's what I always told myself and I still live by that standard. I will never fuck with anyone. I will never be violent if I don't have to. But if someone fucks with me, I'm going to fuck with them right back. And if I lose, I'm going to take something from them at some point or the other because a bully is trying to take something away from you. What they want from you is your soul. They might not understand it, but what they break down when they attack you is they break down your soul. Because at the end of the day, all of the physical damage is nothing, right? Bruises and scratches, these go away. But what doesn't go away is the psychological damage and the self-worth that you lost because you let yourself be bullied. And I repeat that for you. You let yourself. I let myself be bullied for years where kids did things to me that... Looking back, I'm like, why did I let that slide? Why did I let that kid kick me or slap me with no repercussions? I should have done something. You need to do something. Make it count. For every single fragment of your soul that someone tries to take away, make them pay. There is a price tag with that soul. It's my soul. You want a piece? All right, I'm going to take a piece of you. And if I have to bat it off, I will bat it off. That's the way to solve bullying. Adults and all of the... The scores of that, they don't want that. You know why? It's not for your good. It's not because they think it's actually not a good way to go about it. It's because it would create chaos. Because kids would be fighting all the time. But guess what? If you would actually let kids do that, you would find that there is going to be a regulation. There is going to be an homeostasis at some point. The natural order of things would be restored. Kids that bully would get repercussions from kids that get bullied. And the bullying will stop. The no tolerance policy creates... A, a don't ask, don't tell situation where bullies get to shadow bully you and hurt you nonstop. And that creates, again, husk of adults that not only get bullied, but get taught that if they try to fight back, then they're bad people. So they integrate the idea that fighting back with violence is a bad thing. They go their entire life with this idea in mind. And guess what? They get bullied at every single station because they never actually have the ability to defend themselves. So I want you to take that into account. Yes, it's going to be painful. Yes, you will be kicked and punched. But keep, keep in mind that all of that is going to heal. The damage will accumulate if you never actually stand up for yourself. That will never heal. And it's the reason why also what we see nowadays with cyberbullying, where physical bullying has been replaced by computers and, and screens, might be worse. Meaning that the bullying of my age, when we would get kicked around, was better. I already said it. Physical bullying is nothing. You can brush it off. But the psychological damage is much tougher. And that's why cyberbullying is so perverse. You cannot fight back, at least not physically. So it's a different demon altogether, a different topic to tackle with different uh, solutions. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to this. Having the ability and integrity to defend the self. Because you have to understand that bullies are just people who express their will to power. That's all they are. They are people who have the ability to bully you, so they'll bully you because, again, why not? What, so not to not be mean? That's morality. Kids and a lot of adults, actually, don't care about morality that much. They'll pretend to care to look good in social settings, but at the end of the day, most people only abide by morals because they are obligated. The second no one is watching them, they will actually go after your ass. And you have to keep in mind that bullies can be your own friends. Bullies can be your parents. 
uh, it's not, again, this romanticized view of bullying where it's a kid who wears all dark and he's going to, you know, he's going to take your soccer ball. All of that is nonsense. All of that misprepares people. The world is made of bullies. Most people are bullies. You are a bully. I am a bully. We all have this desire to dominate people. We might not express it, but it might, again, emerge at any point. Your dad might have a bad day and he might take it out on you. Does he mean it? Does he want to break you down? Maybe not, but he's still doing it. He's still fucking with your identity. You cannot expect people to control themselves. So you have to control yourself. You have to protect this. This is what's in your control, all right? What occurs here around you and inside your brain, that's when it's in your control. This is when you actually become bullying proof. I also personally resent the idea that people who bully are projecting something like, oh, they see like something that young girls hear all the time. Oh, he's bullying you because he secretly likes you. Okay, cool. Well, he does, it doesn't help me. He's still bullying me. All of that, again is placing the bully in a position where they're almost seen as excusable. Like, it's trying to find excuses for the person who is bullying you. It's not what I'm doing here. I'm not telling you that bullies are good people. I'm telling you that bullying is something that occurs, and bullies are just the carriers of that very, very phenomenon and power. They're just the agents of it. If you were to kill all bullies on Earth, it wouldn't get rid of bullying, because another generation of bullies would be born in two years, three years, etc. So it's important to understand that. Don't glorify bullies, don't find them excuses. Because at the end of the day, who cares? I hear that all the time. Oh, if you understand your bully, maybe he has a tough time at home. I don't, personally, I didn't give a fuck. Like the kids who stepped on my throat and who kicked me in the ribs and shattered my knee, I don't care if your dad feeds you rat food and makes you sleep on a futon in the basement. It's not my fucking problem. My problem is that I can't go to class because I'm beat up every single time I walk through the yard. That is my problem. If you're getting bullied, stop thinking about others. Let, just push away all of that nonsense of people who are trying to make you feel bad about defending yourself by planting all of these ideas of the bully being like a poor Oliver Twist children that has to, again, walking chimneys 15 hours a week to be able to actually put food on the table. That doesn't matter to you. It's none of your problem. It's their problem to control their urges and to create identities that don't make them and turn them into all demons. Your problem and your imperative is survival. So survive as much as possible. That is what bullies are. That is what you are going to have to do. And to resist those bullies, as I said, you can implement the strategy I just presented, but you also are going to have to create a strong identity. I already made a video about that in the description. You can check it out. So you have to have strong boundaries. You have to make sure you don't look like a target. You have to make them pay. You have to be what I call a venomous frog, meaning that you don't have to be very big or very strong. When I got bullied, the body that I had before bullying and after bullying was the same. I was almost the same age. I was the same weight. I, I, I didn't go through one of these transformations that you see in anime and manga where the guy shows up to school or muscular and suddenly no one fucks with him. I was still the same guy. What changed was my intent. I had decided to be a venomous frog. You want to kick me? You want to slap me around? All right, you're going to have to pay. I'm going to poison you just a tiny bit, but I'm going to make sure that you suffer just as much as I suffered. That is what I mean by it. It's the way you actually think that matters when you get bullied, not the way you look or the way your muscles are shaped or your ability to even fight. You just have to have the willingness to fight back. And that most of the time is enough. Once that is done, you're going to have some peace of mind to develop an identity. And that identity, as I described in the video, is going to dissuade people because at some point, it, it gets tiring. Like, I remember being, I think it was 13 or 14, and fighting almost every single day. At some point, you, you get tired of it, especially if you're someone like me who doesn't like hurting others. I just wanted to have a normal life where people left me alone and I could read a book. But it took actually kicking people around to get that. I remember one time, I was reading a book, a guy slapped it out of my hand, I stood up and I kicked him in the face. Was it way too much of a reaction compared to what he did? Yes. Did he, did he stop afterwards? Yes. He never did it again. He never once again slapped my book out of my hand. So I got what I wanted and I taught him a lesson on that day, a very valuable lesson. And you can teach people lessons too. If it actually buys you some peace of mind, you don't have to worry about them. They shouldn't have uh, started shit with you in the first place. Now, 
once you have this ability, you're also going to find that the bullying is going to go way down because people who get bullied become a magnet for more bullies because you look weak, your body language is weak, the way you interact with the world is weak. So you're the perfect prey. You're the exact person that people like that are going to seek out to, again, express their power and dominate someone. But if you do the opposite and you exude confidence and you have an ability to engage people, it's going to be the opposite. As I told you, usually it starts with insults and humiliations and then it escalates to physical damage. Well, now that you have confidence, you'll find that you'll be able to fire back insults. And usually what bullies will do is they will either step down or they'll try to actually arrest you or they're going to try and intimate, intimidate you. And if they don't feel any fear in you, which shouldn't be the case because you'll have been through a ton of bullying by that point, they will back down. The issue is if you let bullies infiltrate your spirits and you start to fear them, that is when your life is over. That is when your life is going to be over forever. Because if you react with fear every single time someone confronts you, you've already lost. Fear is the mind killer. It tells people that you're not going to fight back. You're not going to defend yourself. So refuse to feel fear. Always resist. Always have the ability to put up a strong wall. That is the boundary. That is the identity that you need to exude to protect yourself. Because those that fail to do that very thing become traumatized and they tend to carry the stigma of victimization for their entire life. Because they let bullying be their end instead of their beginning. This is why, again, bullying is good. Bullying should be a start. I told you that I'm very grateful for my bullies. And the reason why is because they made me realize at a very young age that I couldn't just be cerebral. I was a very brainy kid. I loved to read. I loved to, to draw. But I wasn't very physical at all. And I thought I could live my entire life like this. And these kids came, they knocked on the door and told, told me, hey, your brains and your ability to be, uh, to be very literary, all of that, that's great and all. But... What, what we're going to do now is we're going to step on your balls. And since you don't have the ability to fight, well, nothing's going to actually happen. And worse than that, if we just so decide to splatter your brains, they might be very advanced and precious. But at the end of the day, if you can protect them, they're for nothing. It's something I learned when I was 14. And I bless my lucky star that it actually happened like this. Because if I wasn't prepared, I would have entered the wood with no shield and with no ability to understand what was going to happen to me. Many people are like this. Many people never get bullied and therefore they end to life completely naive with no actual defense mechanisms. So the first thing, the first traumatic event that occurs shatters them. And you see that in the world nowadays. Look around you. Look at the amount of people who the second something happens, which is not even, even remotely connected to them. Something they saw in the media, they say, oh, Oh, my generation is so, we're so doomed. Oh, we're traumatized. I've seen people like in their 20s say, oh, we're the traumatized generation. Why? Why? Because you went through like two years of fucking bullshit pandemic? Why? Because there's a war in a country that you're not even connected to? Well, you're, there, are, there are bombs falling like 55,000 miles away and that traumatizes you. You know what that is? That's the weakness from people who never went through any hardship in their life. And that is the truth. These people need bullying. These people should have went to my school. I wish I could have sent those two Slavic kids to their schools. So they would actually bust their nose and save them. And it's the reason why when I look at these adults, I think, man, thank you. Thank you for the kid who one day, because I didn't give him my ball, kicked my rib so hard that I puked. Thank you for the kid that took a baseball bat and shattered my knee. Thank you, because you did me a favor. You taught me a very valuable lesson. And that lesson is... If you don't fight back and you're not strong, this wood will devour you whole. This is why bullying is good. Bullying is a filter. Bullying is something you go through that either breaks you and stops you from, from actually moving forward, or it makes you stronger. And then the next filter makes you stronger, etc. What happens if I remove all of the small filters and I then face you with a major one? You're never going to break that one because you are not prepared. You are not ready. So embrace the bullying. See it for what it is. It's a challenge from the wood. The, a the agents of nature are giving you an opportunity to toughen yourself up. Take it. A kid, again, bullying you when you're 14 or 15 or whatever is nothing. Someone at your job who's giving you a tough time, it's nothing. Compared to what life can throw at you, it's absolutely nothing. So take it, swallow it, make it your strength, 
and be ready because the next challenge is going to come very soon. Life is an endless amount of challenges. Something you see also and something that I wish you would never become, I hope that none of my subscribers will become that, is that the type of people who either never face bullying, so they stay weak, or who get bullied and never actually make it out of the bullying, they make being bullied their entire identity, is that they, enter, they eventually try to turn their weakness into a strength, where they have now been convinced that they're weak for the rest of their life, because the bullies have convinced them that that's who they are, so they have tried to make this their identity, right? Instead of building an identity of strength, to protect the self and then evade the bullying. No, they just submit it to the bullying saying, okay, that's my life now. So because it's my life, I have to try to rationalize the situation. So this must mean that being weak is not a bad thing. So I told you already, who do you think came up with the morality and idea that being weak was good and that someone the strong hurting the weak made him a bad person? Who came up with that bullshit? A weakling, either a weakling or someone who had a skewed vision of the world where he thought that it would actually bring balance to the force to, to come up with these tenets, but it doesn't work because it doesn't align with nature. So there is absolutely no point in falling for that trap as you, as a human, by trying to again make weakness an integral part of your identity. Weakness can never lead to strength, or at least not in the sense that people think, meaning that you can be weak and become strong because it's the only way to survive. It's something that I went through. What can never happen is you cannot take weakness and turn it into strength. You cannot take the concept of weakness and claim that is now my strength. Too many people try to do that. The issue again is that it does you no good. Best case scenario, someone else that is strong is going to see that and take you under their wing and they're going to protect you. But that means you have no independence and no ability to defend yourself. You're pretty much again a dog for someone else. What if that person decides to abuse you and bully you? I mean, they get to, they're the ones providing protection. And yes, that is a metaphor for government and for all of the people who are wishing to surrender their security, or rather, who are willing to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to, oh man, I just, I just completely lost my train of thought, who are willing to relinquish their freedom for security, not understanding that that security is not provided by them, so it can be stripped and removed at any moment. Now, these professional victims that I just described tend to be unsufferable, right? These are the children of bullying. It's the people who have made being bullied their entire, their entire identity. They're unsufferable to be around for good people because they tend to complain all the time, they whine all the time, they refuse to take responsibility, so this means that by being bullied by bad people, you are now completely unpalatable for good people, for people who would actually want, you would actually want to, to surround yourself with. Even these people will not want to be around you. The only people that will want to be around you is other victims. And it's the reason why these types tend to create echo chambers where they tell each other that weakness is a strength because it's all they know and because no one in the group wants to actually see the reality for what it is. That is the reason why they tend to create their own misery. But the worst part is that it also makes them easy target for evil people because once you are being bullied, if you refuse to become strong and you make weakness an asset, guess, get, guess what? Other people are going to come in, smell that weakness and use it to abuse you. And that's the metaphor of the castle that I explained in the identity video. If you have paper thin walls and they can be broken down by pretty much anyone, then you have no protection, yes? Many people would say, okay, then it means I have to reinforce the castle and get a stronger troop. These people said, all right, the castle doesn't work, strength is stupid, so I'm just going to live in a tent. I'm going to have no walls and no protection, and I'm going to just wait for anyone to come and do whatever they want to me. That is the life of someone who was broken down by bullying. Never allow yourself to become that, because that tent metaphor is the perfect representation of a life of someone who has no boundaries, no identity, no personality. They are just, they are, they are just a leaf in the wind. Whatever comes will push them away. It's the reason why I told you that all of these people who complain about life is so difficult and we live in the toughest series. Like, I just want to take them and put them in a time machine and send them back to the, like, the dark ages. I want to send them back to an age where there was an actual plague going on and see how they cope. Or even better, just send them to a third world country. Send them to a country in the middle of a civil war. 
these people will break down like this. But the reason why they are so easily traumatized and triggered by minor events and minor occurrences is because they live again in a tent. If there is even a tiny bit of rain and you're in the tent, you're fucked. If you're in a castle, a storm can come and you're going to be perfectly fine. Better and better yet, if you have said castle, you can welcome people in, people, in, people that you love. You can protect others. Good luck being a, a resource and an asset to people if you only have a tent. You cannot. It's the reason why also you do not want to surround yourself with people who are like this. People who have accepted weakness as an inevitability. Avoid these people like the plague. They only make your life worse because they have made helplessness into their religion. And that has become trendy and cute to be helpless. If you're a male, and heck, even if you're a female, fuck that. Helplessness is okay for pets and it's okay for babies, not for grown adults. And even for children, don't be helpless. Try to develop a very strong and very independent state of mind body and soul as soon as possible. That is the key to defend yourself from bullying. A bullying that again is the storm I described. The storm will never stop. The storm is actually a good thing. The storm comes and it forces people to build castles so that you don't live in like, like a fucking hippie in a tent and do absolutely nothing and don't advance civilization or yourself. You want to build that castle and the storm is making sure of that. So bless be upon the storm. It is what is actually toughen, toughening ourselves up. Because you either adapt or you die. That is the truth of this word. Bullying isn't bad. It just is. It's just a natural occurrence. People are going to try to dominate you. And if you're not willing to fight that domination, you will be dominated. It doesn't mean that you have to bully others in return. It just means that if you want to have the choice to be safe and to protect the people you love, you have to develop strength. You have to aim to become someone who cannot be preyed upon. And you have to use your power for good. Because you can. That's what I do personally. I don't bully others. I use my strength and my confidence to shelter people, to help people. It's what I'm doing with this video. I'm expanding my knowledge that you can become like me. You can become a dog. You know, it's a, again, it's a very black and white way of, to, of seeing the wood. But there are sheep, dogs, and wolves in this wood. Too many people think that there's only wolves, wolves and sheep. That's not true. There's also the dogs. A dog has the same destructive power as the wolf, but he decides to use it to protect the sheep. The more dogs there exist in the wood, the better it is. So become a dog. Or don't. Or become a fucking wolf. I don't care. Just don't be a sheep. Nothing is worse than the sheep. The wolf is more moral than the sheep because at least he isn't a liar. He's living according to nature. Bullies are wolves. Yes, they might be cowardly. Yes, they might be entirely stupid. But at the end of the day, they have power and they express it. They don't pretend to be, again, these morally superior angels. All of the people who tell you that bullying is bad and there's no tolerance for violence, all of these assholes are liars and they're hypocrites. If they possess the power to bully and to dominate others, they would do it, but they don't have it. They are part of these people who have only weakness to show for. So what is their strength? Their strength is in the made-up morality that they came up with to pretend that they are the good ones. But at the end of the day, nature doesn't agree with that. And it's the reason why these people are perpetual victims. Do not become someone like that. You will have to bully others to preserve your values. Again, you will have to engage in fights. You will have to actually struggle with others and use your power to protect or to obtain. That is natural. Never let anyone tell you that it's not or that you're a bad person for it. That is not true. It's also the reason why I told you to embrace that power to protect yourself from being bullied. Power is a tool. You can use it any way you want. It's neither good nor bad. It just is. And that is, and it's the conclusion of this video, also the reason why this word needs bullies. Because bullies keep people in check. Bullies tell people and remind people, hey, yeah, you are a human, yeah, we're out of the food chain or whatever, but we're still animals and we're still going to be violent and there are still going to be challenges and you're still going to have to be strong. This is not the perfect utopia where everyone is nice. Because at the end of the day, it's a counter argument you could say, then offer me, well, why do I have to be strong? Why can't people just be nice to me? Why can't people just stop? Well, the answer is they don't want to. That's it. You can try as much as you want to get them to and shame them into your weird, warped way of morality. People have tried for like 2000 years. Doesn't work. 
You can tell people, don't kill your neighbor, they'll still kill their neighbor, they'll still steal. So what does that mean? We only have one recourse left, and it's to develop the strength to not fall into that trap. You have to have the strength to become someone who's bully-proof. And that is thanks, most for the most part, to bullies and to the ability of this world to purposely bully the one that is not fit. Bullying is a normalizing force that is going to shape you. It either breaks you or it creates a, a being that is going to be in the future much stronger. The choice is yours. Do you want to allow bullying to break you down or do you want to use it to push you forward? At the end of the day, it's up to you. You get to decide. I gave you the keys and I gave you the explanations to understand the phenomenon. So now it is your will that is going to decide your destiny. Because if you want freedom, if you want your body to be who you are and to love and again to protect, that's that. It starts and ends there. You have to develop that power. You have to become the boss. People who have power get to decide. The rest get to follow. There is no real difference at the end of the day between someone who exercises their power for good or for evil. Evil. They both exercise their power. It's just a question of perspective. All of that boils down to the person who has the power. And that's it. The bullying around you will always exist. There's always going to be people who are going to be mean and you want to be the type that is going to resist that bullying, that can stop that bullying if you so decide and that can create a safe heaven for people around you. But that is going to go and be created through one thing and one thing only and that is strength and never ever weakness. And I'm going to leave you with these words. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.